Here we are back at the cook shack and today the old vertical smoker is going to be rolling and we're going to make some special chicken. Some of my cheap chicken that I always like those uh, nice quarters, uh, leg quarters. So let's take a look at what we've got. Step number one, we're going to start off with the fire. So we're going to open this bad boy up, have a look. And you can see we've got a nice fire, bed of coals. We've got two that are in the process of lighting. We've got one off here to the side. I like to pre-cook my wood. That way when you add it, you don't have to have a ton of smoke. We'll open that throttle up and uh, let that light real good. You can see our temperatures. We're pretty stable on temperatures. I'm going to go ahead and shoot that on up. We're just right at 350 and I want to take it on up to four, four and a quarter. What we got for stability here is we have a nice big pan of water. That may not look like much in this video. I have put a little bit of seasoning on the top of it. That's why it kind of looks funny. But that uh, stainless steel pan right there will do a fantastic job. And it will hold two gallons of water. So between that raw super heat of the flames and that wood, and of course they come up through the little cutout there, that would come up and hit your chicken and just burn it to a crisp in no time. So that water can only get up to 212 and the main heat will come up around it and we can take it as hot as we want to. Uh, notice that we also have blown a hole through the roof. Got a little cosmetic work to do that is not screwed together yet on the flange, just sitting there properly and uh, it'll wiggle. You can burn your finger off and move it wherever you want to. You can see that, but I'm going to work on that, but at least we got it through the roof, not having to breathe a bunch of wood smoke while we're cooking. So let's see what we're cooking today. I have mentioned this chicken several times. I buy this at Walmart, and uh, the brand name's right there, Sager Creek. I don't work for them, but I'm just letting you know what we use. And uh, you can see what it says, ready to cook chicken leg quarters. And uh, they put it in a little bit of salt water and it's in a bag and it's about half frozen. This is my oil that I always recommend. This is the oil we use to cover up our pans with. And let's see what we got to cook today. Wow, look at that. We're gonna call this signal light chicken. You got a green light to go. And then if it switches over to yellow, you better be cautious, show a little caution. And uh, then if it goes to red, you better stop because you're probably going to get too hot. So we've got signal light chicken today. These are uh, thighs and leg quarters all put together in one nice piece. And I'm going to see if I can load these without dropping anything, including my camera, one-handed. That'll be fun. So let's uh, go ahead and open this bad boy up. Oh, you know what? I almost forgot something. What do we need to do to these before we load them? Wow. How about some dry rub? Now this dry rub, I added a little black pepper. I added some uh, chili powder and I added, I wanted these kind of be like taco flavored a little bit, a little bit Mexican. I added, uh, what would you add to make it kind of taco tasting? Kind of like taco salad or something. I added some cumin. I added a nice dose of cumin to that. And uh, boy, that is some good smelling stuff. That cumin... I wish you had some smell vision here because that stuff is really a nice, it's not pungent, it's just a, it's kind of a delicious smell. I guess that's a way to say that. It smells very savory. And uh, wow, and that's going to make, look at this now. I didn't have quite enough on my fancy uh, old iron to uh, put all that chicken on it, but we, uh, we have a little baking dish and uh, we'll put it on that. Main thing is get it cooked. And then if somebody pulls off the fancy dish, we got replacement chicken. These are backup players. So that's a handy thing. I'm going to have to get out here to the side. Watch this. We're going to see that had blonde. We're going to throw some seasoning at it. There's some throw it at it. Throw it at it from the side. Throw it seasoning at it. Ah, ah. Now we got plenty. A little blonde spot there. Nothing against blondes, but we don't want naked chicken. We want that chicken to have seasoning. And we want plenty of it. Now, that may be too much, but uh, we can always uh, melt some of that off as we're cooking. I guarantee you. Let's let me check this here. A little bit, a little bit. Not too bad. Not too bad. 
Look at it. Look at the onion. It's got an onion on the elbow here. It's got these little onions on the side. You got these little onions. Look at that. That covers up that little knobby so he doesn't burn. I got one there. That's a little onion cap. A little protective. Got one there. And believe it or not, there's actually one right there. It don't look like it, but he's there. Boy, that's going to be so good. I can't wait to eat this chicken. I'm telling you. These pieces of chicken, that big bag was uh, right at $7 for 10 pounds. And it puts these pieces, these leg quarters, at 55 cents a piece. That just blows my mind that you can get those that cheap. And uh, people are talking about the high price of food. They might be shopping in the wrong spot. So here we go. Let's see what we can do. I'm going to give this one the uh, top shelf right there. And uh, look at that. He's in there. I got a little rod in the way. That's for hanging sausages on. So there's the top rack, and uh, I'm gonna move him over just a little bit. Now, when it goes to drip, this is the cool thing about a tray. When you're not cooking out in the open, sitting on the grate itself, like if you just laid that chicken there, it's gonna burn pretty quick, and all your juices are lost. In the carnivore world, we value the fat and the au jus and the juices off that chicken. We highly value it. And uh, you don't have to just drink it. You can pour it off and save it to do something else. But gosh, is it good. And it keeps that chicken nice and tender. It's kind of like it's boiling a little bit, like uh, braising on the top and boiling on the bottom. And if you don't like the blonde part of the chicken, you can always flip it over. Halfway through the cook, you can gently flip it. And uh, you can get it to brown up on both sides if that's what you like. It doesn't bother me either way. I guarantee you this chicken right here is going to go down the hatch. So signal light chicken. We got a green light to go, a yellow is a caution, and a red you better stop because it's going to be too hot for your little mouth. So I love the stove pipe there. I got that done. This other one is just blocked off. It may leak a little bit. Nobody cares because we are outside. Let's shut this. Because if, you, if you're looking, you ain't cooking. That's, uh, I learned that from, uh, somebody that I've been watching for a long time named Franklin. He is a professional cook. I am a beginner. I've only been doing this for, uh, you know, 30 years. He's probably got, well, he's, he probably got 40 years. I don't know, but he's been doing it for a long time. While I was out working the oil field or in the Navy, he was probably cooking. So, Notice that in this uh, nice, nice cook shack, we have all kinds of nice things. This thing is still under construction. Say, so, well, who has that much stuff, tools in their kitchen? We do, right out here. You can see, I use a grinder. We have a Sawzall. We had a Milwaukee drill. We've got a Dewalt cordless drill. We've got a, a nice little skill saw there, Dewalt. Big 40 foot tape measure. Got the level, by the way. I had to level this too. This bad boy has got to be level. We had two little holes up top where smoke was leaking out. Put a couple of shameless steel screws in those. Had a hole here that was going to be for a th thermal probe, but uh, not using it now. So just a bolt and a nut and two flat washers. Let's have a look and see how good old Papa did on this uh, leveling. That is not too shabby for uh, a guy with thick glasses, not too shabby. All I had to do was uh, take a couple of shim boards. You can see there, that's what was required, a skinny one and a medium one. And those go all the way across and that, that took care of that. So I'm happy about that. And uh, let's go ahead and put this level back over here so it doesn't get in the way of cooking. And uh, we'll put him there, that shelf's not level. Move the gas bottle out for right now because that hole where the pigs dug out has got to be filled in with some dirt and concrete. This whole thing, we've made a decision on it. This dirt floor here, that is uh, all going to have uh, a special pallet. It's not the kind of pallet you'd trip over. It is a large crate like machines came in from Germany when I worked at Matthews International. And the boss man, very kind, gave me those. So I've got a great big old trailer out in the, out in the backyard that's full of those uh, machine pallets crates uh they're like floors and they got four by four 
beams, and then they got uh, nice runners on them, some one buys, and uh, we're going to fill this whole thing in with that platform. Notice I did cut one more post off. That was proving to be in my way. Once this grill moved forward, there was no reason to try to use that as a stabilizer. So very happy overall. Let's take our, check our temperatures out. Uh, before I do that, notice I got a place to put my little spare grate there. You have to have that out of the way to add water. But uh, let's check this fire one more time. Fire's looking good. Let's go ahead and stick that last piece of wood on because we really, when you're cooking chicken, you don't do low and slow in the beginning. You want to really ramp it up. You want to get it hot because uh, that's how you get that skin nice and crisp. You can always go low and slow later, but initially with chicken, chicken thighs, chicken drumsticks, uh, I don't cook the breasts. So they're just dry as can be. I just don't. You can make them where they do good. I know all that, but I like these thighs. They got more flavor. They're uh, dark meat. And so the drumstick and the thigh both, and I never liked them fried. Worked at KFC as a kid, and I would go for the wings and the breast meat every time on fried chicken. But once I realized what's in all them cooking oils on carnivore, I said, no, sir, we're not going to be putting any more of that super highly processed oil down the hatch. And then I built a biodiesel laboratory in the backyard. And you would not believe what happens with uh, when you break that waste vegetable oil down into its two parts. Half, uh, three quarters or so is your biodiesel and the other quarter of it is some black, tarry looking glycerin, which is soap. And uh, wow, you could pour that out around a tree and it'd kill weeds for two years. So uh, I just uh, was a no, no for that. I'm not cooking with oil anymore. If I need a, uh, not that kind anyway. If I need some really good quality oil, I'm going to switch to this right here. If I just need a little coat of something in the pan, it's going to be avocado oil. Very high temperature goes up to 550 degrees. Any other oil I need will be fresh butter from the cow, carnivore. So we uh, got this thing rolling. You know, it's on the smokestack. All I got right now is a tab that I cut off of the, of the smoker itself. I just laid it up there so my fire wouldn't go out of control. So here's the plan on that. You gotta have control over a fire. The bottom is basically for fine control, it is. And the top right here, I'm gonna show you the details. Uh, I left some junk on top of that box. Right here, whoa, that is hot. Right here, we're going to blow a hole through that, small hole, and I've already ordered it. I'm gonna put a damper right there, just like the old timers used on the wood stove to control heat in the house. And with this right in my face and my reach to the damper, and I'm gonna extend the damper cause I don't wanna have my body touching the front of this stove. I'll extend the damper handle out here. I probably will run it right out here to this post. So all I gotta do is put a little bracket right here some kind of a nice custom looking little bracket, maybe a EMT clamp like you do in electrical, run the control rod over there to the damper and have my little special handle right out here. So my hand will turn back and forth. When it's at 90 degrees facing up and down, that thing will go like a freight train. And when you turn it like this flat, it still has holes in the damper and it'll let the fire breathe some. But uh, I'm telling you that top one is where it's at because when you let that smoke roll out the top and the heat roll out the top, it draws a vacuum. That vacuum comes in right there. And even if you've got that shut down a good ways, it's still gonna draw like crazy. So that does your course uh, alignment, your course adjustments on speed, temperature, speed of air. And you do that, uh, you can do 25, 50, 75, or 100 degrees in a notch real quick. Just a couple of notches, you can make that thing move 25, 50 degrees at a whack. And down here, you would use this for your 5, 10, 15, 20. So, or 10 degrees, maybe 10, 20, 30, you know, small increments. So, 10s and 20s here, and 50s and 100s up there. And uh, once you get this set, and get the right amount of wood in there, you don't have to fool with it too much. It'll... Stay pretty stable. All right, let's check our temps and see what we got. Bottom one, right close to the water, believe it or not, this is coming around the edge, is approaching 450. 
and uh, that one is 350 and going up and this one is almost 400 so we got plenty of fire we're gonna go ahead and set this at half throttle now you don't ever want to choke a wood fire if you choke a wood fire and you see big clouds of white smoke rolling out the top looks like you're burning trash you are burning trash you got a smoldery fire you will ruin your food in about 10 minutes that food will get so much residue off that smoke on it it's little particles of half burnt wood and it will literally make your food turn acidic if you've ever had food that tasted real acidy as soon as you put it in your mouth it tasted good the smoky flavor tasted fair but it just burnt your tongue with acid like battery acid that means you're you're running a dirty fire so a lot of the things that apply to uh, heating your home with a wood stove apply to uh, to cooking. You want to preheat your wood, keep it close to the stove. You want your wood good and dry. Once that wood lights, I'm gonna show you one more time, try not to mess up my fire. When that wood lights, you want that right there. You do not cook with just straight coals. You cook with that bright orange flame. That's what makes your heat. Some people think the coals is the hottest part. And it is as far as putting a piece of iron in there and trying to heat it up red hot. But the space inside your stove, the only way you get that whole stove really hot is those orange flames. And I can prove that to you with an infrared gun over and over and over again. I've had a wood stove in the house completely packed full of coals. And my side temperature on the stove be 350 to 400. As soon as you throw one log in there and you get that bright orange, man, you can take that stove up five, 600. You can overdo your stove in a hurry. So, but you want that burning. You want it burning. When you see that get down to no flame at all, if you've got good temperature, you're finishing with your cook, you're okay. But if your gauges start to fall out on you, that ain't falling out. That's hot. Four and a quarter. That's pretty hot. That's pretty hot there. That's right above the water. And that's pretty hot too. Almost 400. So, well, you're out of the barbecue ban. I'm not barbecuing right now. I'm trying to sear chicken skin and I ain't gonna open that door either. We don't touch that door because if you're looking, you ain't cooking. We're trying to build heat in that steel box and it is happening right now. So I'm gonna stop uh, expounding on everything. Back up just a little bit. Try not to trip, fall over backwards. I just want to show you we, the cook shack from a distance. We are so happy with this cook shack. I, I just, uh, the carnivore diet has given me so much more energy. I wake up in the morning about 4, 4.30 and I'd come out here before the sun ever comes up, turn my lights on and just get excited about what I'm gonna do next. So it's a very fun project and I thank the Lord that uh, the carnivore has really helped me with my energy. My blood pressure was 142, and now my top number is 118. My bottom number was around 108, and it's now down to 75. So I've got, and my pulse rate, 68. And my body weight, I was 278, and I, I don't want to brag. I'm not trying to brag. It's the first time I've weighed this small of amount this lesser amount in 30 years but i'm at 195 pounds so my final target is 175 i'm currently at 195 so all i've got left to do is 20 pounds uh-oh someone says i will run it off of you papa who is that is that sniper sniper what are you doing tell me what you're doing wag your tail if you like chicken do you like chicken I think you do like chicken. Okay, say bye to everybody, okay? Okay, well, see you later, buddy. See you later. All right, this is how to recover from a problem with your fire. I came out and cut some big blocks of wood to add out here, and they weren't quite dry enough. And when I added them, they didn't light. They started smoking pretty bad, and uh, I backed them off and put some other stuff that cooks a little bit better. And then I cut up some very small pieces of wood. But here's what you do to recover. If you have a problem and you load a bunch of wood on there, which I got ahead of myself as I always do, 
I didn't have all my wood pre-cut like I, I've got some down there to finish the job with now. Anyway, when I added the wood, it began to smoke and smolder and there was no yellow flames. So what you do to save your food is open your door as fast as you can. Get that door open. Open the bottom door. Let that fire breathe and start to get lit. Once you see the orange like that and it's lit, you're going to be safe as long as you get plenty of air. So now it's safe and we can close it back up. You just don't want a smoldery fire. If I'd left that going for very long with both doors shut, it would have put that heavy, heavy white blue smoke right on the food. And now you see we've got just a wisp of smoke coming off. And that will even clear up some more as the rest of that lights. And uh, we'll keep a close eye on that. But we've got a good flame now. Let's double check it one more time before I go back in the house. And uh, we could still let that, let's let that cook just a little bit more. Let all those sticks get lit good. We'll still get heat. That's a cool thing with the door open like this. You're still getting plenty of heat going up into the main chamber. So uh, it's dropped down a little bit. We've dropped down to 250. And that dropped out more. And that was around 250. So we're going to ramp it back up. That won't take long for all that to get good and dry again. And be running. We're at about, uh, I'd call that about 65, 70% lit. And it won't take very much longer. And uh, you can see that just a little bit of smoke coming off that now. Those small chunks save the day. You got to have some small chunks to be able to light up good. You do not want a smoldery fire. A lot of people, they don't like a wood smoker because they don't realize there's a little bit of skill involved. It's quite the, it's quite the art to get this down pat. And uh, I will have a good supply of wood once I get that floor put in. That's going to be what this area is for. That's why you see, of course, the gas bottle will move. But that front wall that was on the front of this building i tore it off to have some fin sway which is a flow the flow of air water light they'll flow get into the building easy and out but by putting that heavy oak there now we can stack wood and throw it in there up against it and not have to worry about knocking my sheet metal out so one last check on the fire one last check checking checking check on one and uh, it looks to be lighting up good. Those little rounds, they'll light up some more here in a little while. Those are all in the pre-cook stage. We've got one over on the side, one on this side. He's just heating up. Once those get up to combustion temperature, you can throw them onto the fire, and they won't give you that problem like I had earlier. That's actually two logs there. It looks like one, but it's I cut them small so they can light easy. So they are preheating and pre-drying, and ready to go get ready to go on duty so we'll let that roll and uh, we can go ahead and throttle this down a little bit we'll put him about half throttle you don't want to go to extremes you don't go wide open you don't want it always shut just kind of go always make adjustments in halves and uh you'll see what i mean look what we got here this top boy look at that 300 and climbing. Now I can go in the house and I don't have to worry about it. I'll come back out and check here in about 30 minutes. But you just watched, you just watched how to recover from a smoldery fire when you added a little bit too much wood. I'm glad I did that. Don't mind the mistake. That's how you get good at doing things. You have to have experience. You have to have some things that you did that are wrong. And don't cry about it. Don't get upset with yourself. You just say, okay, I will do better next time. So now, next time, when you see me, I will have that whole bottom rack full of wood. Nice chunks and pieces. I may even put some cage around the side so it'll hold it. And we'll get that thing full. That way I can add a little wood at a time. And it'll be in good shape, ready to burn. So we'll be back with you in a little while. Have a look at the chicken on the next run. Adios, bye for now. Time to have a look at this chicken and see what she's starting to look like. Wow, it's starting to look pretty good. And let's uh, get me an oven mitt here. Just a second. Oven mitt. So we can work on this thing. You don't want to burn your hands. Okay, so let's drag out the bottom one. See what him looks like. Make sure it's caught. It's caught good. Boy, that's good. Put it in some sunshine. 
Don't drop it. Don't drop your chicken. Okay, look up here. What is this? On top of the smoker, stainless steel pan. Wonder what's in that. What could it be? Oh, that looks good. That looks like butter. Let's put some butter to this thing. We're losing a little bit of our juice, but we're going to recover that real quick. All right, so here we go with some butter. Let's put a little butter in that. Get the skin where it uh, looks delicious. Wow, that looks good. I'm telling you, that skin, you can seal that skin. I hope I'm getting this on video. It is so hard to video with one hand and watch the camera and watch what you're doing. And uh, it's kind of not that easy to do. I'm looking for my spoon. There's a spoon. Oh, that looks good. Yeah, that's good looking chicken right there. Now, we don't have to do too much more to that. So let's put him back in the hopper. And I'm going to get that pan out of there. I'm losing my au jus. It's okay to lose a little au jus. As long as you don't lose your mind, you're okay. There's that. This one comes out. That pan is uh, doesn't have as much juice in it, so it shouldn't overflow. All right, this time we're going to get a little bit fancier with the big old pan here. Let's see if I can pour and hit that with the video rolling and not waste butter. I bet I can. There's some on the pepper. There's some on the chicken. Put some on his little knuckle protector. There's some on the chicken. Now we're down to the last bit of butter because it's turning white. That's just butter, pure butter. Okay. And close this up, put that back in, put that in just a scotch. Boy, that's looking good. That is looking good. Now is a good time. I know that was a little bit weebly wobbly, but I'm sorry I'm not professional. But uh, someday I'll have me a professional filming crew. Let's take a look at this fire, see what it looks like. Oh, the fire looks pretty good. We don't need a whole lot to finish this, but I would like all these pieces down here that are not exactly kin to each other. To get a little closer to each other, let's do that. Let's bust it up a little bit. We will take that big piece, that big square piece, put him on the coals, and uh, pull this one in here. Him is a chunk. He's charcoal now, but he still got some. He still got some horsepower left in him. So we do that. We will leave this. These little guys we pre-cooked. We're not going to fool with them. We'll leave them over there for the next go around. And uh, now that's firing good. See the fire? That's what we like. We will leave our throttle at exactly half like we had it. It's doing fine. And close this up. The next time we come out, we will probably be pulling some chicken. Let's check our smokestack. Now we got the flame going good. Let's check it. Check, check. Checking on one. Let's see. I'll get a background where you can see it. There you go. Nice little wisp of light smoke. No big bellows of it. Boy, it'll be exciting when I get my damper in. It should come in in a couple of days from Amazon. I'll install that damper right there and I'll try to remind myself to look at my own video. And remember this post is where I'm gonna mount the control handle so I can dial it right here while I'm watching my temperature. You see that temperature, it's already starting to come back up. When you open that door, boy, those drop down quick. All right, we will be back soon to pull some chicken and look how delicious that chicken will be. We're so happy with our new cook shack. Really nice to have this out here and I just uh, enjoying the heck out of it. I hope you do too. Over and out for now. Okay, now comes my favorite part of all. That's, uh, you didn't get to see my secret thing I did here, but I took this beautiful little iron pan from 1850s and i poured off all of the au jus all the chicken fat all the leftover butter and it went into this pan of goodness right here golly now people that are not carnivore they go oh my gosh i'm not eating all that fat watch what we do with this now i'm gonna try my best to get this right i'll have a little shadow here and there but i'm gonna try to well, watch this i'm going to get this thing right i'm telling you look at that look at that I may make a mess when I'm outside. That's why my wife doesn't let me cook in the kitchen. <laughs> I'll make too much of a mess. Let's come in this side so I don't shadow it. Look at that. Now I got it right. I hope you can see that. Let's get a little bit there. We got to get the elbows. 
and I uh, hope that's showing up good. Look at that. I don't want to miss anybody. Now, this is the part. This is what separates the beginners from the professionals right here. And I'm, I'm getting to be professional. This is what separates. My fire is now nice and low. Uh, you don't need to see this too much, but uh, my fire, let's see how hot that is. Not too hot for my fingers. The fire's nice and low now, and all we're doing now is we're finishing it off at 250. I did an internal temperature test, and we got up to about 175 on the chicken, which is good. I like to take it on up to around 195. I know you can eat it at like 165, but we're trying to get that where it's loose and wants to fall off the bone. That's the way I like my chicken. All right, so back in with that back in come on now work with me work with me i gotta get a glove all right gotta get a glove gotta get a glove and there we go so now those are back in let's check the fire this is our very last step before we make our pull but we want to get this thing right now see the fire is down to just nothing but a few coals we could uh stir that a little bit won't hurt a thing Let's just stir this. We'll just bring this over to the other side in case in case something's not quite right. Uh, with that side for heat, let that clean out the, the old burn pile a little bit. We're gonna check one more thing while we're out here. One more thing I forgot to check, and that is our water pan. Oh, it's looking good. It's still three quarter full of water. No problemo. Okay, so now notice the throttle. I got it down really low. Let's go down even lower. Let's go down to where it just barely got any air. And now that's gonna keep them temperature gauges at about 225. That juice will soak back in. And I'm telling you, when we pull that out of there, it's gonna make some people chomp at the bit to eat that chicken. And remember, these leg quarters are 55 cents a piece. So you can eat two big leg quarters for a dollar ten. I mean, that's unreal. I'm stuffed if I eat two of them things. So on the carnivore lifestyle, you can eat meat. The carnivore diet, you can eat meat and enjoy meat. You can eat as much of that chicken as you want to. You're not going to get fat because you're not eating sugar. We don't follow it up with a big old chocolate cake and a coconut pie and lemon pie and all that. I know it's delicious. I know it is. But for carnivore, we skip the sugar. We skip the side dishes that are starch, and we eat the meat. We get stronger. We're burning body fat, and not fat. Not fat here. Body fat's burning up. It's going away. So where does it go? It's going into the fire inside my body. Metabolism burning up, and uh, I'm happy. So uh, y'all keep coming back. We'll show you the next one, which will be time to do a pull test on it and see how tender it is. So over and out for now. Well, the moment of truth, this chicken has now graced our home, come off of the vertical smoker, and I'm telling you, that stuff is delicious. So how do you know it doesn't look like you touched any of it? Well, that other pan that was kind of bare looking, that had uh, four pieces in it, I tore some of that up. So the carnivore diet lets you eat as much meat as you want to eat. That's what we like to do. We eat the meat until we are completely full. And when you get full, you're done. You don't have to worry about it anymore. My wife and I have got into the habit. Uh, look at these beautiful flowers she's got. Golly. Our habit that we've got into is to eat as much as you can for a day or two and then skip a day or two where you don't eat anything. So we're doing some intermittent fasting combined with carnivore and man it gives you new growth hormones new t-cells helps your skin repair lets your body rest from doing the job of digesting food which our food's easy to digest because it's all meat anyway but uh it's a very good lifestyle it's so much easier it saves so much time when you go to the store you're not looking at a 5,000 different things to try to think through. You don't have to get 40 different things on a list. All you really need is some milk, some butter, some eggs, which we collect from the backyard, some chicken, some beef, some pork, and you're good to go. 
Uh, we, we make our own sausage now. We've got a grinder. Uh, please watch that video. It's, it's coming right along. So uh, thank you so much for business here at Whimsical Farm and uh, Carnivore Health with Ashley. Carnivore Diet, I should say, with Ashley is the channel. And uh, we'll give you good health. But Carnivore Diet with Ashley, and we've got a master channel. You can click on it, and it's got all kinds of different playlists. Some for the vertical smokers, some for the Weber uh, cattle, some for cast iron, cast iron uh, re refurbishing cast iron. We've got some for the uh, pit boss, the digital smoker. We'll have some for the oven and lots of recipes, lots of egg recipes, chicken recipes, brisket, uh, smoked ribs, baby back ribs. We got a little bit of everything. Steak, precision T-bones cooked on iron and served on iron. So thank you again for visiting with us. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, this signal chicken, you can still see. We've still got the green light ready to go, yellow for caution, and red to stop. And uh, those those held up pretty good. The onions look good. Everything looks good. The au jus at the end made it delicious. And uh, just uh, welcome back anytime. Come back and be with us. And uh, just tap that subscribe and like and bell notification on the way out the door. We'd really appreciate it. And uh, be blessed. Enjoy the carnivore diet. Enjoy the uh, the nice recipes. And uh, we hope to keep going on the cook shack and get get it finished up probably this month. So talk to you later. Bye bye.